do believe that it's a, a gift from God. I do believe that it's um, a gift that I was born with. When you actually just say, hey, I need you, or are you around me, that that's when they come forward. It's like there's a woman that stands sitting by the side of us now. Um, whether she's your grandmother or not, I'm not I sure. I mean, I have these moments where I get up in the middle of the night and I go to my bathroom and I'm like, okay, and who are you? everybody a warm welcome to wisdom from north my name is Janneke and I'm now in the Roman theater in Norway next to the one and only Lisa Williams now Lisa is an internationally acclaimed medium and clairvoyant she's the author of uh, survival of the soul and living among the dead and she's now touring around Norway with her show message from beyond Lisa, much, much welcome to Wisdom from North and to Thank Norway. You. I know. Isn't it gorgeous? I love Norway. You know, it's one of my favorite places. Yes, because you've been here many times, I've noticed. Many, many times. <laughs> I feel like I live here now. Yeah, and yeah. you have a lot of fans. It mm -hmm. seems like every show is sold out. It is. Um, th certainly this, show, this, this set of shows, um, I, I don't know what's happened. I think all of a sudden my popularity is, just keeps rising. It's, it's wonderful. So let's talk about the shows that you're going to do tonight, for, for instance, because I'm an actress myself and I know that sometimes I can think like, oh, is my voice, is, is my voice going to be there today? So what if the spirits don't show up? <laughs> well, I panic. <laughs> First you do? of all, um, they never do. What happens is I actually go backstage. So after talking with you and having something to eat, I'm going to go backstage and I get in, I meditate. And then what I end up doing is I get a couple of messages and I start writing these messages down. And as soon as I've got the messages, then I go, oh, then I know that they're going to start coming forward. Okay, so you are kind of preparing. Yeah, I, I think I have to prepare because if I don't prepare, then, you know... I don't feel as though I'm going to have a good show. Um, you know, there's certain things that I get into, I, certain things I do, like a routine. Um, and that's what I do. I, I, I tend to prepare in that way. So let's move back from when you were young, because mm -hmm. that's when the gift came to you. And I saw somewhere that uh, it was kind of a frightening experience the first time. Yeah, I mean, there was times when I actually found, <laughs> it was quite interesting, I'd find that the, you know, I'd have hands and faces and things that come at the, at the, um, at the walls and then I would hide under my covers um, and it was scary but in fact it still scares me now and last night I was in my hotel room and I, I text my friend and I said there's a spirit in here and she said to me what are you going to do what I'm hiding under the bed covers <laughs> and it just reminded me about when I was four or five when I actually used to do that so you're still afraid of them I'm not afraid of them, but I think there's times that I just want them to go away, you know, and, and say, hey, I'm done, I'm done. So that's, that's how I feel, yeah. But, you know, I've had it for years. I think my most memorable one was when I was seven, when my best friend, Samantha, um, basically, she said, oh, I think you've got the gift. And she, well, I had all these books that were laid out on the, on the shelf. And, I ha and she said, let's see if you can guess which book you know you've got and I had like hundreds and so she placed her hand on one of the books and I said I need connection with you and the book so I held onto her hand and I just had this vision of the princess and the pea coming about and I said it's the princess and the pea and she went oh my god and I think we did that about eight or nine times and I got every single book right so that was the first real prominent experience that I really scared me really really scared me so when did you kind of decide that this, I, I want to do this as a living? Because I, I guess it's quite a responsibility. Yeah. And at the same time, um, well, I guess I have several questions here because uh, a lot of people have gifts, but then they are not necessarily awakened. Mm -hmm. Like, are, are you working with your uh, spiritual development at the same time in a way? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm always working with my spiritual development. There's always exercises that I do. There's always constant um, things that I want to do and, and constantly trying to develop myself. So I teach. That's one thing I actually do is I teach in a spiritual development school. I have my own school. And as I'm teaching my advanced students, I'm constantly learning. And so therefore, I'm pushing myself as well as pushing my students. So I'm finding that my own gift is getting higher and stronger as my students gifts are and so that's quite interesting but there was never really a time where I went I want to do this for a living there was never really that moment um I kind of fell into it um you know I I was wow I was oh, I was in my early early 20s you know it was about it was about 18 20 years ago that I basically started to really develop this um and a friend of mine said, I'm having really bad trouble with Dave. And I went, oh, he's cheating on you. And, and all of this stuff came out. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And I kind of wanted to put all the words back in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened is everything happened to be right. And next thing I know, she told her friends and her family. And I was doing readings and readings. And at one point, something had to give. Something had to give in my life. Because I was doing so many readings and working full time. And then I was a single mom mum as well I had to decide and I decided to do my readings and uh, it was about probably about uh, 14 years ago now that I decided to go full time into my readings because you actually wanted to be a teacher didn't you when you were young yeah I mean I wanted to be everything I mean I did I wanted to be a teacher and I trained as a teacher and I think that's the reason why teaching is I'm very passionate about and I now teach obviously spiritual development and and mediumship but it was very very important for me to actually um, try to educate people in the right way and I think that's what I'm trying to do so uh, in a way I'm still teaching hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, now, your grandmother had mm -hmm. this gift, and I've heard your son has this gift. Yes. And I'm wondering, so is it not like from, or maybe it's both, is it in the genes? What is your perspective on that? Or is it a gift from, you know, the universe? Or do you think it goes like in uh, your family in a way? I do believe that it's a, a gift from God. I do believe that it's um, a gift that I was born with. I believe that I come from a generation of mediums and psychics. Um, I also, um, for some reason, I've been brought in with this gift. I don't know what my contract was, why I was supposed to come in with it this, this time around. Um, but I also believe that people can develop it. I do believe that we're starting to have more and more people who are more developed now. Um, I do feel as though we've got more and more people who are um, being born into the world spiritually developed as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel as though we're actually coming into a, a very spiritual way of life very much so and you've probably found that yourself in your line of work oh yeah definitely it's uh people are opening up more and mm -hmm. more and there there are so many people talking about this now and it's very exciting yeah um i'm very curious uh have you been able to okay you can see the spirits but have you been able to look into that dimension to see how it look looks like there yeah, I had a near-death experience um, when, oh my gosh, now, maybe 10 years ago, actually probably not, probably about eight, nine years ago. And um, I, I crossed over and the white light was there and everything else, which was quite incredible. Um, and it... I have actually delved in and out. I have been able to through my spirit guides, through a lot of channeling I do. And what's happened is I wrote a book about what happens when we die. Um, and I found that that really has helped a lot of people. Um, I believe it's been translated into Norwegian if it hasn't mm -hmm. already. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, it helps people understand what the afterlife is like. And it is a world of complete, utter love. And, it, you know, it's, it's done on thought process. So they, we think things through, we think about things, and we manifest things. It's a lot of manifesting because we're just energy. And this energy, um, we connect through energy. And the spirit world is literally three feet away from us. So it's, it's kind of here. It's not far away you know and so they live in the same sort of like universe as us but just a different dimension 
So when you see these spirits, mm -hmm. uh, do they usually show themselves in a certain way? I mean, if they're, they're, they are just energy, they can appear as anything, I guess. Absolutely, and they can. And I do have some spirits that will come forward and they look very young and then actually they're quite old. You know, they pass away when they're 80. And they say, well, I wanted to look like this because this is the age I was happiest. And I'm like, wow, okay. Mm. So it is quite interesting how spirits do come forward like that. Um, and so they'll, they'll just come through how they want to be, you know, my grandfather, he was 82 and didn't have any hair. And when he comes back, he comes back at the age of 42 with hair because he didn't like having no hair. So there's no time on the other side, right? No time at all. There's no time, there's no day, there's no night, there's no age, there's no gender, there's no hostility. You know, it's a completely different space. But can they, like, read our thoughts? Because I've been thinking about this. Like, I, I don't want, you know, my grandmother to be too <laughs> close. <laughs> of course you don't. Um, I mean, we none of us do. I mean, I have these moments where I get up in the middle of the night and I go to my bathroom and I'm like, okay, and who are you? And, and that's a little in the bit... bathroom. In the bathroom. It's a little too close to comfort. Yeah. Um, but there's an unwritten rule that they don't watch everything. You know, it's when you actually just say, hey, I need you or are you around me, that that's when they come forward. So are there good and bad spirits? Of course, with everything, you've got the yin and the yang, the black and the white, the good and the bad. And with any good spirit, of course, you're going to get a negativity. But it depends on how your own mindset is. So for me, I'm a very positive person. Mm. So I very rarely get the negative spirits that come forward. Mm. When I'm in a not so positive frame of mind, then I will of, of course attract the negativity. And I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of parents who come to me and say, my teenager is you know, seeing very negative spirits. Mm. And so the first thing I ask them is, What's their frame of mind like? Are they negative? Are they down? Are they depressed? Well, you know, every teenager, oh, the world's against me. You know, it's like very heavy. And they, of course, they all say, well, yes, they are. And I said, that's the reason why. So it's about the mindset that we're in because like attracts like. So I tend to only get the positive spirits, which is why tonight is going to be full of laughter and full of fun and we'll get the good spirits. Yeah, I mean, it does remind us that we are very responsible for our own lives, mm -hmm. that we really have to watch our thoughts. Absolutely. And we do. We have to watch what we manifest. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, we have to, if you look at these patterns that we get into, you know, with relationships, mm -hmm. so we get into negative patterns with relationships and then we get out of that relationship and then we get into another relationship exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's because all we're doing is attracting that. We don't change our mindset. So we really have to think about it. So in uh, one of your books, I think it's Survival of the Soul, mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about soulmates. Yes. Now, do we all have a soulmate? And uh, what is a twin soul? And do we all have a twin soul? Well, it's an interesting question because I'm actually expanding on that book now. And I'm actually writing a book on soulmates uh -huh. and soul families. Mm. And what was interesting is I'm again going back to a lot of channeled messages. And one of the messages that came through um, was about how a soulmate, how we think that our soulmate is a, a, a person of the romance of the heart, you know, an affair of the heart. But actually a soulmate is somewhere where we're connected. We've actually met someone before, we've had many lives, many trials, many tribulations, many difficulties. Um, and that soul has just journeyed with us through various different lifetimes. Now a twin flame is something different. It's when that energy, it's almost like that's a capture of two souls. But I haven't, I'm, I'm waiting to get the, the channeled message on what the twin flame is because I don't want to put my opinion on it which I feel I know what my opinion is without actually getting the full concept and it's funny you should bring that up because I literally got what a soulmate was only two days ago. Yeah because I've started to think that I want to do more interviews about love and how to mm -hmm. attract the right mm -hmm. one and uh, we're all talking about the big love you know you want to meet the one but do you think there's the one for everyone in every life. 
I think there's certainly one love that will capture your heart. I do. Um, and I, but I'm not sure whether or not we follow that through. See, I've mm. also been told that sometimes our soulmate, as in our perfect match, could also be our spirit guide that guides us through life. Because we are the yin and the yang and they want to help us. And so, you know, I've, I've seen that. And it's funny, I was only reading it this morning. Um, you know, I believe that we can attract that soulmate because it, it's how we attract, look at ourselves. And some of the channeled information that I got was about um, how we perceive ourselves, the healing that we need to do. And as soon as we see ourselves as love, then we attract that love. And it's really interesting. And, I, you know, I can't wait to get this book out. You know, so really can't. It's all back all, all the time to loving yourself. Completely. It's all back to who we are. Hmm. So I have to ask you, uh, can you see any spirits around here now? <laughs> We're in a theater <laughs> and, cool. uh, you know, uh, I have dead ones too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's interesting. I mean, I always wear my watch, which kind of shuts me down, you know, and wow. that's what shuts me off. But it's interesting because, you know, whenever you come to a theatre, there's always energy. It's like there's a woman that stands sitting by the side of us now. Um, whether she's your grandmother or not, I'm not sure. But there's a, you know, a woman that's sitting here. And as I looked up, I saw a gentleman with kind of like a little hat on waving at me there. Okay. So, you know, there's always some energy. Of course, there's energy in the theatres. It's crazy. Easy. yeah wow so th they're just staring at us not yeah they don't have a message no it's it's interesting and it's funny because they they I, whenever i come and do my sound check i see them but <laughs> no one talks until i'm on stage and I, i'm kind of happy actually because i don't want to use up that energy because it mm. takes a lot of energy to do it but yeah i have a feeling that could be your grandmother on your mum's side i don't know whether you were quite close to her but yeah mum's side yeah because yeah. i've got her she's just she's really sweet anyway she's very proud of you Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Did you used to sing? I sing. I'm a singer. Okay, well, she's she's just commenting on your singing and your voice. And um, she's just shown me an album. Uh, she's just shown me an album or a record that you need to create that you've been thinking about for some time, but you actually haven't created it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I made one song, but I have so much to do. Uh huh. Well, she's go, go, go. Okay. Well, that's nice. Yeah. She's supporting you all the way. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, much, much good luck. Uh, good luck with tonight. Uh, I wish I could see you. Uh, it's. I'm sure it's gonna be wonderful. And I think you're healing a lot of people. Mm. So I want to thank you for your work. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I. I, I love what i do so i appreciate it thank you yeah and uh thank you for watching guys and much much light from the Raman. bye bye